In this video, we're gonna look at how we can move and turn the player with our keyboard and mouse. Now, in the last video, I talked about how I created a base multiplayer template. So if you haven't grabbed that yet, uh, you might wanna go get that because I'm gonna build directly on top of that and we're gonna see what that functionality looks like today. So if we come over to the existing project, let's see where we currently are with it. So right now we can look around the player, uh, but he can't move or turn. He's just gonna move uh, from side to side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna enable when you turn the camera and push forward or strafe to the left or right, uh, they're gonna actually turn in that direction. So let's just build that out really quick today and see what that looks like. So if you got the project pulled up, I know right off the bat, we're gonna need to add an orientation variable. Okay, and it's just a transform 3D that we use to handle the uh, player model orientation. And if you're not familiar with this setup, basically what the uh, player input synchronizer does, so if you pull that up, this just handles all of the player's inputs. So the keyboard and mouse inputs are all captured in here. Uh, right here, this input motion uses this uh, input vector, uh, get vector call, and it just basically reduces the keyboard's motion down to a vector that has a maximum of one. So it'll be like one comma zero, zero comma one, or negative one comma zero, and that sort of thing. So what we do is we actually synchronize that. So if you look under the player input synchronizer, uh, you can see here that we actually synchronize that so that the server has access to move our player around. So this input motion is synchronized and over on the player side of things, uh, just to recap really quick, uh, when a player gets loaded into the map, we set their ID uh, right here and that will call this uh, set multiplayer authority, which gives the uh, keyboard and mouse inputs from your player, uh, the client, uh, complete authority over those inputs. So we use the keyboard and mouse inputs to synchronize them to the server, so then the server can go ahead and move the player based on those inputs. And that logic happens right here. So on the server side, the physics process will hit this apply input, and then it basically goes through and moves the player based off those inputs. As you can see right here, we have player input input motion, and that's what we've synced from the player uh, input synchronizer. So what this does is it's basically just interpolating with this lerp function uh, from the previous motion to the next, so it smooths out the player on the server. And of course that motion uh, is synchronized because we synchronize the player synchronizers uh, properties right here. As you can see, we synchronize velocity and transform and uh, motion and that sort of thing. So because we synchronize that, we're able to move the player across all the clients based on the server's authority. Uh, so what we're gonna do in this video is rebuild this function to actually show us or to actually be able to rotate and move the player based on the uh, mouse and rotation of the camera. So the first thing we'll do is we're gonna build out the camera basis. So we should have a get camera rotation basis. Let me go over and grab it. So this just gives us the rotation uh, global transform basis of the camera. So we'll put that there. Okay, so we're just basically cleaning up the camera here, uh, making sure our up, our Y axis is uh, zeroed out. And uh, we're just gonna normalize the uh, Z vector of our camera. And this is just basically cleaning up the camera uh, so that when we use it to apply our motions to the player, uh, we have a clean uh, motion and rotation there. Okay, so under this is on floor, we're basically going to just remove all this stuff because we don't need it anymore because we're gonna redo it. So when the player's on the floor, now if for your game, uh, it might be a little bit more complicated. You might not have this set of checks here where I'm seeing if he's jumping or not and if he's on floor or not. It, it depends all totally on whatever requirements you have for your game. But for my game, when he's on the floor, that's when I wanna apply this motion. So let's go ahead and look at doing that. Player look at target. So based on the motion of the mouse and your keyboard inputs, like is he going forward or backwards? Uh, and with that, uh, motion of the mouse, which way ever that's turned, uh, that's gonna give us, we're gonna establish a target uh, for that player to look at. So let's just look at what that will look like. Okay, so we've got our player lookout target. We're basing this off the camera's X uh, normalized vector there and the uh, camera Z vector. And then we just add that together and that basically puts those two vectors 
in line and it allows us to establish a target that the player will focus on and head towards. And we're gonna use that in just a second. So we need to iron out some other boilerplate here. Okay, so in, uh, when we have a look at target that is basically non-existent, so if we're not doing anything with this or we're not moving, uh, this will go to zero and we don't wanna keep applying it. So we just have a check here uh, to make sure after a certain threshold, we don't calculate this anymore. Uh, so what we're doing is we're taking our existing rotation. So where we currently are, whatever the orientation of that player is. So that'll be our quaternion from or Q from to uh, Q2, uh, which basically creates a transform of that, where that player should be looking at uh, around the up vector. So it's just like spinning in, in space there. And then we just grab the uh, quaternion uh, of that as well. So what we do with those two things is we create a basis transformation of the uh, Q from, so where we are, and then where we want to go and we basically alert this together to make this smooth transition uh, with a of course our frame rate delta or our process a uh, physics process delta with a weight there so that'll give us our orientation basis for where the player needs to be rotated towards so let's go ahead and see how to use that Uh, okay, so we're just setting a uh, horizontal velocity to the uh, object's velocity right now, this uh, player uh, velocity. And I just set the uh, Y to zero because without that, I don't want to affect the, you know, player to start moving down. So you'll see me cleaning up these Y axis from time to time. And that's what I'm doing with that. And then the speed will be the player speed. And if he's running, so if the player is running, we're going to use the run speed else. It's just set it to the normal walking speed. And those, uh, of course, are established up here at the top. So this is a little tricky, but basically what this does is when you rotate that camera, it, you know, it's going to be rotated in 3D, 3, 3D space, right? Because you can go up and down with it, but we don't really want all that up and down motion applied. So if you do that, like little special vector tool or whatever, if the like camera rotation is down a little bit, this just basically takes that X axis and like negates the lower level of it so that it like evens out. So you basically put it back into the correct plane uh, so that you have your correct rotation around that Y axis. Cause we don't want to lean the character forward uh, with this uh, camera motion, right? So this basically snaps him back up into place. So that's my best way to explain that. So uh, if you have any more questions, just drop by the discord and we can hash it out. And then to uh, determine the direction of the player, we take that camera basis that we just fixed and then we multiply it by a uh, vector uh, that basically establishes the movement of that player uh, through this vector three. So we're not gonna do anything with that Y axis, right? Because we don't want him to move forward. So this, and I, and I add this negative here because uh, it's basically the inverse of that. Otherwise he would just be moving the opposite directions of your, of your inputs. And that's just something that you can try out. Like if I remove that negative, he won't move in the correct direction. So that's how we get the direction. Um, so this is pretty self-explanatory. If we have a movement or a direction that falls below this threshold, we're just gonna set that velocity to zero. I like doing this so that the player doesn't just stop. Like you remove your finger off the keyboard, the player may continue to drift a little bit. Um, but this kind of prevents that from happening because we'll just like set that to zero. So it'll he'll come to a nice stop. And then otherwise we apply that horizontal velocity. We lerp between that uh, position and we just uh, apply an acceleration based on our uh, process physics uh, delta there. Then what we'll do is we're going to set the velocity equal to this horizontal velocity that we just set. So here we set our X and Z velocities um, based off our horizontal velocity that we just calculated here. And that's just, you know, because that's the plane that we're gonna be working with. And then for this animate, it still says walk, even though he could be running because my uh, blend tree uh, that I set up for the walk will actually use this vector two, which can be like one or zero or negative one. And then this will be zero or one. Uh, so in that vector tree, like if it's, if it's over here and this is one zero, uh, that's gonna be walking. But if it's one one, that's gonna be running. So you guys can check out that blend tree in, uh, in your own time there. Um, but yeah, that's basically what we're doing. Okay, so let's just finish this up uh, and get the player moving. 
Okay, so that should pretty much do it. We've got our up direction to make sure our player and, and this model is pointing up. Uh, we apply our move function here, and we basically just set the origin. We clean. This is just cleaning up the origin. Uh, just make sure that the numbers don't drift into some weird amount of decimal places there. So we keep it clean with this. We keep the noise out of the system, and then we apply this uh, orientation basis um, to the player model's uh, global transform. So I think this should do it. So let's go ahead and run it again to make sure it works. Yeah, so right away you can see that now I can turn the mouse. I'm holding W, so he's running forward, and, I, and I'm holding Shift because he's running, and now I can turn a mouse and he completely rotates. And if I uh, hold A and W, so I'm strafing to the side, or I'm not strafing, but I'm moving to the side, it still follows that camera movement and it'll just follow it around and I just hit W. And then I hit, uh, what is that, D there? And then he runs that way. And then you can see, and then if I hold S, he's gonna run towards me. Now, you might not like that, so you'll have to adjust the inputs to uh, have him just run backwards. I'm, I haven't really gotten that far yet. Uh, I'm sure it's not too difficult uh, to figure out. Maybe, you know, if you want me to do that in another video, let me know. But let's just make sure that our synchronization's working. So let's go ahead and run the other client. And let's see that our uh, rotation and movement with our keyboard and input is actually syncing correctly. So let's just get a top down view a little bit and come over here. And yeah, you can see he's totally turning uh, and I, I can rotate him with the mouse and you can see he's changing directions and great. And we got a jump in there. He can jump and turn. Yeah, look at that. So he jumps and turns really quick. Does an about face. Let's see that one more time. Let's get into the view. Yep, and he turns and jumps uh, about face really quick. So yeah, this is working great. Uh, as you can see now, you have this like really nice uh, third person controller done where you can use your keyboard and mouse inputs to move your players around in the game. And uh, this is just a great starting point. So guys, if you're interested, go pick up that Godot multiplayer base template and watch this video and get your uh, character controller movement working. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please give it a like and make sure you're subscribed. I got a lot more going on and I've got that game I'm going to be building out. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.